friends we were discussing about the effect of uh, drying on the medicinal plant and why drying is an important post cultivation process or the step to maintain the quality of the medicinal plants now depending upon uh, uh, the procedures that are being followed during the drying drying methods can be broadly categorized into natural uh, or the sun drying or air drying and artificial drying now as i told you that natural sun or air drying is basically a slow process and it is it is meant for those plants which have constituents that are stable towards photo oxidation or simple oxidation because you are going to dry the drug in in sunlight you are dry you are going to dry the drug in air if you are drying it in a shade but it again the constituents may get oxidized so this kind of natural drying processes are suitable for those drugs whose constituents are stable towards oxidation now the natural air or shade drying also helps in retaining the color of the plant so if you want to retain the original color of a drug then you should always go for air or shade air drying you dry you you will be drying the drug under shade with the help of air blowing above the drug and this air blowing will help in circulating uh, the moist air which which is originating from the drugs by the evaporation of the moisture second is the artificial drying wherein we utilize certain type of equipments instruments to dry the drug now in comparison to the natural drying artificial drying is a much faster process and it is largely preferred in the tropical countries where the moisture content in the air is quite high because if the moisture content in air is high then drying with the help of natural methods is quite difficult so therefore artificial drying is preferred in those countries further uh, it also helps in retaining the color and actual aroma of the drug because if you are drying uh, using the natural methods even under the shade then you are liable to lose certain type of uh, certain quantity of the aroma original aroma of the drug and that can be retained in the artificial drying because here you can control the temperature conditions here you can control the air conditions the velocity of the air the temperature of the air and so on so forth so artificial drying is a more controlled type of a drying whereas in case of natural methods we we don't have any control over the natural conditions now coming on to the different type of uh, the equipments which are mainly the dryers so, so different types of dryers that are being utilized in case of artificial drying these can be clean dryers tray dryers infrared dryers conveyor dryers vacuum dryers freeze dryers and osmotic dryers now clean dryers are nothing but they are somewhat two story small uh, structural unit or a small building wherein the drugs are kept at the level of the first floor and the heat is provided beneath at the ground floor level now the heat since the warm air is always lighter it will move towards uh, to the upper side so the, that warm air moves towards the upper side and it passes through the drug which is lying at the first floor in the uh, perforated trays so this hot air passes through the drug taking all the moisture from the drug and it uh, ventilates from the top second floor so this is how basically uh, kiln dryers workers uh, works the next is the tray dryers now tray dryers are the common type of dryers which are uh, widely used in industry now these include again the perforated trays and a hot air is uh, uh, the drug is exposed to the hot air from the top and this hot air falls on on the drug and it removes the moisture third type is of the infrared dryers now infrared dryers utilize the heat that is produced by the infrared rays now these type of dryers can be useful in a small scale unit or uh, at a laboratory scale but at large commercial scales or commercial levels 
such kind of dryers some uh, are sometimes not found economical next we have is the conveyor dryers now as the tray dryers conveyor dryers are also widely used by the industry so we can say tray and conveyor dryers are the two most widely used type of dryers by the industry and in conveyor dryers the plant material is spreaded in a very thin layer on a conveyor belt and this belt is is moving and we expose the drug on the belt with the towards the hot air that flows from the top so this you can always control the flow of the hot air you can always control the temperature of the hot air and you can also control the uh, speed of the conveyor belt so by controlling all these factors you can make uh, uh, this drying process more effective and since most of the variables are controllable these two uh, type of dryers that is conveyor and tray dryers are very much popular in, amongst the industry next is the vacuum dryers wherein the drug is put under vacuum and uh, the vacuum helps in decreasing the boiling point of the water thereby making it evaporate at lower temperature and you can get the dried drug now vacuum dryer also since it it occurs uh, under vacuum condition no air is there uh, the major advantage of vacuum dryer is that it helps in uh, uh, in preventing the oxidation of the constituent if the plant is having uh, certain vulnerable type of constituent towards oxidation so by vacuum dryer we can prevent such kind of oxidation then freeze dryers freeze dryers are a costly affair uh, in terms of when we talk about the herbal drugs because in this the drug is first freezed and uh, it works on the principle of sublimation and the freezed uh, water is immediately get converted is converted into vapors and the material is dried the only problem is you have to store the material again under the desiccator conditions in order to keep it dried because once uh, the water is sublimed then the dried material is is more prone towards catching the moisture from the air so one has to be very critical and osmotic dryers we know that they are exposed to what osmotic condition where uh, water moves out of the plant cells and the plant material get dry again freeze drying uh, though it is uh, popular to a limited extent in the industry because it's uh, you have to set up certain equipment which which are quite costly in comparison to conveyor or the tray dryers so Uh, the two dryers are more common in the industry followed by freeze dryer and osmotic dryers are very rarely used in the industry now here you can uh, see certain uh, techniques of drying the crude uh, plant material in in the first picture the plant material is tried is tied to uh, a sting on a rod and they are allowed to stand there till the plant material is dried then you can also see the plant material drying in 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 the trays or the perforated trays wooden rack uh, wooden trays are there which is perforated and uh, the, the perforations basically help in the movement of the moisture and they help in also help in keeping the uh, the drug in the dry form and the third one is the material that is stacked on the wooden racks where a newspaper is spread and the uh, drug is placed on those racks again the perforation of the racks uh, helps in the circulation of the moist air so that prevents the accumulation of the moisture in a particular place thereby making drying process more efficient so these are the just the conventional methods of uh, drying now during the drying process the temperature and duration of the drying are the two most critical factors and both these factors should be optimum because higher drying temperatures as well as longer duration they both have a deleterious may have a deleterious effect on the overall uh, quality of the medicinal plant in terms of their effect on the composition of uh, secondary metabolites vis-a-vis the concentration of the secondary metabolites say for example you are drying a drug for longer duration and at higher temperatures then the drugs which are having volatile oil you will find that there is the content of volatile oil decreases and the phytoconstituents whether they are present in the oil or they are present in other parts of the plant because you are drying the whole plant material and uh, 
either the uh, there will be decrease in the volatile oil content or the phyto constituents the content will decrease because they they may undergo thermal degradation or their original composition may get altered and this alteration is largely due to uh, due to the initiation of various types of reactions like oxidation isomerization cyclization dehydrogenation and all such kind of reactions they may get triggered at higher temperatures or if the drug is exposed towards to high temperature for longer duration and all these reactions basically leads to the change in overall chemical composition as well as it will leads to the formation of certain secondary metabolites different uh, secondary compounds which may change aroma of the oil like uh, there will be formation of aldehydes there will be formation of peroxides or ketones once the drug is exposed towards the higher temperature for longer duration and that is why duration and the temperature both are critical factors then over drying may also cause reduction in the amount of uh, as i told you the volatile oil of numerous drugs say for example in case of osimum there it has been found that the there has been a reduction of 36 to 45% in the overall volatile oil content and same happens in case of oregano 6 to 17% reduction in the volatile oil was found when the drug was over dried now this kind of reduction you you may also find when when the drug is dried under natural conditions or the natural drying process at room temperature but the extent of the effect is much less in comparison to the artificial drying further it was also found that when uh, in case of the natural drying when the length of the drying was extended up to 10 to 15 days in shade the overall recovery of the taxanes and we know that uh, taxanes are important anti cancerous compounds that we obtain from taxo leaves so the overall recovery of the taxanes was reduced to a significant level and that is why i said that the duration of uh, uh, the drying process is also very critical now it's not only that the duration or the temperature of drying impacts on the uh, content of the secondary metabolites but it also impacts the color of the drug because there are certain medicinal plants that are utilized for their color it has been found that because of the over drying process the uh, cell sap or the acidic compounds they react they come out of that cell due to uh, due to the destruction of the cell because of over drying and those acidic saps they react with the chlorophyll molecules and as soon as they react with chlorophyll molecule they promote the loss of chelated magnesium ions and we know that magnesium ions are important ions in the chlorophyll structure and when these magnesium ions are lost it causes the destruction of the chlorophyll molecule or the structure of the chlorophyll molecule thereby causing uh, causing the loss of the color of the drug further these magnesium ions can also be lost by both um, using the dry air or or the moist heat and they can also be affected by the external acidic conditions now as I, as i told you that as soon as the cells or tissues they get collapsed during the dying process these chlorophyll molecules because of uh, the loss of the magnesium ions they get released from the protein complex and they get transformed into the pheophytins and these pheophytins leads to the change in the original color of the plant material or the plant drug and this is basically how uh, the over drying or drying at very high temperature for longer duration leads to the decolorization of the drugs for, uh, which may be uh, required for their color properties now apart from change in the color or change in in, in the secondary metabolite composition or uh, uh, their nature over drying also makes certain softer parts of the plant brittle 
say for example you are using leaves or petals of a particular plant drug so if you expose these uh, plant material for towards over drying obviously these plant parts being softer they will become brittle and when they become brittle packaging of such material becomes very difficult because during that packaging process you are going to lose considerable amount of the drug because they have already become brittle now rapid drying helps flower and leaves to retain their color and aromatic drugs their aroma so that is why it is always preferred if you want to utilize a particular drug for its color or for its aroma you should again dry the drug rapidly but the bottom line is one has to be very critical while maintaining or selecting the temperature range for drying that particular drug because that temperature will be governed by the type of the constituent and the uh, uh, type of the constituent means chemical nature of the drug as well as the physical nature of the drug whether the drug is in the powdered form whether the drug is is uh, uh, is leaves or petals that is the delicate parts whether the drug is hard that is bark or whether the drug is rich in moisture like roots and rhizomes certain green stems are there which which have high moisture content fruits are there which have high moisture content so depending upon the physical nature of the drug this is the bottom line depending upon the physical nature of the drug and depending upon the chemical character of the drug one has to select the rate of the drying and the temperature used for drying so as a general rule leaves herbs and flowers may be dried at a temperature between 20 to 40 degrees celsius barks and roots which are harder uh, plant parts they should be dried between 30 to 65 degrees celsius and there are certain drugs which have specific temperature requirements say for example digitalis it requires drying at a temperature less than 60 degrees because beyond that uh, the cardioactive glycosides undergo thermal degradation so depending again depending upon the type of the plant part of the plant chemical nature of the plant one has to select the drying conditions now after drying comes the storage and packaging of the drug if you don't uh, you have dried the drug properly by taking all the precautions and after drying you did not you were not uh, careful enough for storage or packaging of the drug again that will lead to the degradation of the quality so therefore storage and packaging are also important factors in maintaining the quality again the storage and packaging of the drug will be governed by the physical and chemical properties of the drug and physical we have already discussed the type of the plant material whether it is in the powdered form or it is in the entire form because it has been found that there are certain drugs when they are powdered is stored in the powdered form they tend to gain the moisture from the air and they become useless so again uh, it's quite important you you should know your drug before you are packing it and chemical properties or the chemical nature of the drug includes the type of the chemical constituents it is having so if the drug is having uh, chemical constituents which are prone towards oxidation then they should be stored in air tight containers if they are prone towards uh, Uh, degradation due to moisture again they have to be st- uh, stored under air tight condition along with dehydrating agent so all these factors govern the storage and packaging of the drug then air light moisture temperature and pests these are the major source of deterioration of the drug during their storage or during their packing so proper consideration shall be given to protect the drug Uh, from these types of agents air light moisture temperature and pest now apart from taking care of all these factors there are certain general uh, rules or guidelines for the warehouses or the storehouses where the drugs are stored now the storage area must have sufficient and separate space for the drugs which are under testing so you can always hypothetically divide your storage area into three major categories the drugs which are to be uh, used for testing right second is for the approved samples the drugs which have been approved after the testing and the third area should be of the rejected sample the dr- the sample which have been rejected after testing because if the approved or rejected sample get mixed again the whole exercise will become futile 
then the storage space must be ventilated properly ventilated there should be no accumulation of moisture in the air there should be no accumulation of the higher temperature in that particular area so proper ventilation should be there the area should again be free from moisture and pest different stores or the areas should be marketed for the fresh uh, and the dry herbs again these two should not be mixed because fresh drugs have high moisture content and if they are mixed with the dry herbs then they may lead to development of certain fungal or the bacterial infections in the dry herbs also then the there should be a separate space for the storage of extract or concentrates because these are the products of the medicinal plants you cannot store these products along with the crude herbal drugs then uh, the drugs should be stored for minimum possible duration because longer the storage duration more are the chances of the degradation prolonged storage until and unless specified in some cases it should be avoided like in case of cascara bark it is always recommended to store the bark for a specified period of time in order to make it more efficacious if such kind of conditions are not required then the drug should be stored for very minimum possible duration because it has been found in numerous plants that as the storage duration increases there there was a decrease in in the content of the desirable or the desired secondary metabolite like in case of uh, 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 taxus baketa when the needles of the taxus baketa were stored for one year the taxol content was found to decrease by 30 to 40% same is in the case of the drugs containing volatile oils if they are stored for longer duration there will be a decrease in the overall volatile oil content then the drugs should be stored in airtight containers or under inert conditions if required and sometimes also along with the dehydrating agent so some drugs if they are prone towards hydrolysis prone towards moisture condition then they should be stored under the airtight condition uh, conditions with dehydrating agent in order to prevent any kind of damage due to moisture volatile oil drugs since they they get evaporated at room temperature they should be stored in airtight containers fixed oils like castor oils or arrakis oil or cod liver oil since they are prone towards rancidification when whenever they are exposed to air they should be stored in airtight containers same is in case of uh, various kinds of leaves because uh, the constituents may may get oxidized uh, on storage so there therefore such kind of uh, drug should be stored under inert conditions such as in under nitrogen uh, atmosphere now it has also been found that if the drugs are stored under high moisture condition they tend to absorb moisture from the air which increases the enzymatic activity and this enzymatic activity may cause hydrolysis of the uh, secondary metabolite desired secondary metabolites as was observed in case of digitalis or hemp and therefore it's always recommended to store all such material in proper air tight containers either with dehydrating agent or under inert condition then depending upon the nature of the drug physical nature of the drug storage conditions may vary as i told you that if the squill is uh, if if a drug is stored under powder condition say for example squill if it is stored under powdered condition then it is it tend to absorb moisture because it it's quite hygroscopic in the powdered form therefore squill is always stored in form of slices so depending upon the requirement requirement of the drug you should also take care of the form of the drug in which it is stored same is in case of colophony big masses or the uh, it is stored as big masses because the powdered form of the colophony absorb moisture and the constituents get oxidized next is the effect of pest on the quality of the medicinal plants and as i told you that these pest can affect the quality during the cultivation as well as after the cultivation or during the post cultivation processes now there are certain pests like root rot armil armillaria root rot or the oak root fungus it's basically it's a fungus it causes destruction of the roots and can lead to 
the death of the plant within two to four years. So one has to be again take care during the cultivation. So these are the examples wherein the pest cause the degradation of the plant quality or the damage to the plant during the cultivation. So downy or the powdery mildew, these are caused by Ancinula nicato and the major uh, symptom of this infection is the development of the yellow or the chloritic spots on the leaves. Again, uh, when there is a depigmentation of the leaves, the overall metabolic or the physiological processes, they are altered and it leads to the alteration in the production of the secondary metabolites. Catharanthus roseus is normally infected with ester yellow group virus and you can see that uh, the leaves of the Vinca rosea develop yellow coloration or uh, yellow coloration or the dots on the surface which also leads to the loss of the alkaloidal content. There are certain insects as uh, you can see in case of uh, Elstonia scolaris wherein the insects they damage the leaves by developing certain galls or barrel shape hard shape structures uh, on the surface of the leaves thereby damaging the leaves thereby damaging the secondary metabolites that are produced by the leaves. So these are these are the few examples wherein we can see that how pest can affect the quality of the medicinal plant both in terms of uh, their vegetative yield and also in, in terms of uh, the secondary metabolites that are produced. And how you can prevent? You can uh, prevent by applying proper uh, pesticides, biopesticides or biocontrol measures. Biocontrol measures means by utilizing specific uh, 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 microorganisms that are useful microorganisms. You can also use uh, uh, certain types of genetically modified crops which are resistant to a different types of infections. You can always uh, go for proper conditioning of the soil before you start with the cultivation and other cultural practices like intercropping, crop rotation because I am not going to discuss all these factors into detail. So, all these, all these practices will help in preventing uh, pre preventing the growth of the pest population. Now, coming on to the pest during the storage, various kinds of bacteria, fungi, beetle, moths, all these are the pests that affect the quality during the storage of the plant drugs. And not only they, they cause uh, quality issues, but they also lead to certain safety issues. Say, for example, beetles, drug room beetle, it basically affects tobacco, ginger and licorice along with tobacco beetle. So, these are the beetles that uh, affect these uh, drugs during their storage. Likewise, Australian spider beetle or the brown spider beetle, it basically attacks on the capsicum, ginger, nutmeg and coca during their storage. If these drugs are not stored properly, then they are prone towards the attack by these kinds of beetles. Then apart from beetle, moths are there, coca moth, which attacks almonds, cotton, cotton seeds, groundnut and other uh, seedy drugs. Likewise, plodia also attacks on cinnamon and almond. So all these kinds of moths, they attack these drugs when they are not stored properly. So the bottom line is or the control measure is you should maintain proper hygiene of the warehouse by removing any kind of spillages, by removing any kind of uh, uh, debris, by removing any kind of waste packaging material because all these waste materials or debris, they are attractants for these pests. Either these are beetles or moths or any kind of pest. Apart from these beetles and moths, rodents are another uh, major pest which can affect the quality of uh, the medicinal plants. So all these waste material, they also attract rodents. Then you can also prevent the damage by these pests by following good packaging practices. You should use good packaging material. You should go for appropriate packaging. You should maintain optimum storage conditions like it should, uh, you should provide cool and dry environment to the, your uh, warehouse which prevent the growth of certain kind of pest which uh, prevent different types of pest from entering into the warehouse. Because all the uh, condition, dry environment is there, lower temperature, all these are deterrents uh, for the pest to enter into the uh, warehouse. You can also use certain pesticides or chemicals 
such as fumigation of uh, your warehouse by methyl bromide or ethylene oxides. The, this type of fumigation practices also help in killing uh, different types of pests. You can also spray certain insecticides. You can also use natural insecticides like pyrethrins in order to kill uh, the pest or different types of insects that are there in the warehouse. So friends, this was uh, all about the factors that uh, affect the overall quality of the medicinal plants during the cultivation and post cultivation. So in order to maintain the quality, in order to maintain uh, the safety of the medicinal plants, one has to be very critical, one has to be very careful with all these factors. Only then we can maintain the quality in the end product that, that has to be used by the end user. Thank you.